Hi, story time. I've collected a lot of courage to tell you this story, but well, here we go. I was a mechatronics student. 2016 was a happy year for me, as naive as I was back then, because that year was my first year of college as a mechatronics student. I was passionate to finally study as an engineer after numerous factors encouraged me to be an engineer. Mostly, some pop culture sources like Iron Man. I am a huge fan of Iron Man. Other than that, going to my weebish interests, Steinsgate, of all things, encouraged me to be an engineer. I thought that I could replicate Steinsgate and build a time machine with a microwave and a phone. I know, thinking of it now, that's pretty stupid. But the point is, I have a lot of passion and interest in engineering. With my high scores in physics and math, I enrolled into a prestigious college to be a mechatronics student, and from that on, I feel like I am ready to be an engineer. Or so I thought. The very next year, suddenly, my college got into a problem. I do not want to disclose a lot of details, or else I feel like I will be in trouble, but in summary, my college had to move their establishment due to a conflict. The old college ground was a big establishment, with a lot of facilities for various activities too. But the new college ground is just an office building. I know this is kind of selfish of me to judge the college quality by the college ground, but it is worse than you think, because this change is also impactful to their curriculum. Namely, a lot of field learning was changed to class lessons. So, in short, college feels like a slog. Time and time again, there's always class learning about theories, and it is not balanced with any practical learning. It just sucks. This is the first time where I felt like my passion in engineering is starting to die down. Fast forward to the later half of 2019, where I should be working on my thesis as a criteria for graduation. At that time, I was so tired with college, and I just want to get this over with. Well, unsurprisingly, I failed my first thesis. I was devastated. From then on, I hated everything regarding college and engineering. It was also the first time I felt depressed as well, but I still have high hopes that I can at least finish college. But in the next semester, I failed again. This is exactly the point where I felt my passion for engineering had died. Eventually, in 2021 and early 2022, I finally finished my thesis, and I passed with a D for my thesis score. That was a passing grade, so hey, it is better than repeating again. I finished college knowing that what I learned in college is that I wasted my time in college and that I have no passion for engineering. That is, until I found what I'd like to call them the automation game trinity. 2022 seems like the year where automation games are starting to get popular, whether it is because of the advanced hardware availability for a high demanding game genre with their demand on continuous computing, or that the pandemic grants us a lot of free time so that we can sync our free time better with these automation games. Either way, even though these automation games are released before 2022, 2022 is the year of automation games, or at least, the year when automation games become popular. I want to talk about these automation games in order of my overall enjoyment. Keep in mind that some of the assessments that I'm going to say are just my opinion. So, we'll start with the first game that captures my heart and introduced me to this whole automation genre. That game is satisfactory. Satisfactory is a first-person open-world factory building and automation game. You are a pioneer of Fixit, you are deployed to an alien planet, and your objective is to build a factory to exploit the natural resources of that planet. Satisfactory is the first automation game that I've played, and I've admittedly sunk the most time to this game compared to the other automation games. Satisfactory is amazing. 
Satisfactory, just like the other automation game in this video, is one of the games that has a great curve of progression. At first, you are just one guy with a small ship that landed on this huge new world, but slowly but surely, you can create the greatest spectacle of a factory that you can creatively imagine. You wanna make a huge tower? You can do that. You wanna make a huge train station? You can do that as well. You are not limited to your buildings with some random realistic physics as well, so you can actually build some floating buildings if you like. So, you can go wild on buildings in this game. But for me, the curve of progression is great not just because of the spectacle or the architecture that you can build. To me, huge buildings are not great if they are not functional. And since Satisfactory is a factory slash automation game first, this is not a problem. Satisfactory is arguably the simplest game to introduce their technology and automation, making the skill floor of this game pretty low. That doesn't mean it's bad in any way. It means that Satisfactory is the automation game that does not overwhelm you with a lot of tech at the start, and the introduction to the material that you are going to be using or process is relatively simple. For example, in Satisfactory, you'll need three raw materials at the start, iron, copper, and limestone. It is quite simple to keep track and understand. For the majority of the game, you will use these for most of your buildings and machines. Every few texts that you unlock will slowly unlock other materials including coal, crude oil, and later on, uranium. While it might be exciting to just jump to nuclear power with uranium, Satisfactory does not want you to do that right away, because they know how overwhelming it can get when you suddenly just get whatever you can while you haven't got any idea where to start. You want to play it slowly as you learn the game slowly. I had a lot of fun playing Satisfactory in 2022. Satisfactory is arguably not the best automation game to play because of the fact that it isn't complete yet and it has less content than its competition. However, the fact that it has a low skill floor got me hooked to the intricacies of creating the factories that produce process materials, both design-wise and the whole calculation aspect of building the factory. The UI and information telling of Satisfactory is clear and transparent. The machines that process materials will give you the exact number of how many per minute it will process and that in itself is a huge basis on how to make your factory optimal. As an engineer, a factory's biggest enemy is bottleneck. That means when the process is not running optimally because the process slows down at one part of the process, Having the information transparent to the players really helped a lot in making your optimal factories and that is exactly why I played this game. The only bad thing that goes against Satisfactory is probably because it is currently an unfinished game. Like there are hints of exploration to be a huge part of Satisfactory and well, it is already a big thing considering the huge amount of biomes and places that can be explored in the world. But there are some work-in-progress relics in the world that currently do nothing except probably annoy you with sound cues when you go near them. You are so lucky that you found this most valuable artifact. Other than that, there are still some bugs that are present in the game and I can argue that this is probably the buggiest game of the three, but that is purely because it is unfinished. However, the game in itself has enough features that can net you around 100 to 150 hours of playtime, so content drought might not be a huge problem. As a closing to the Satisfactory segment, I highly, and I mean highly, recommend Satisfactory for those who need a sandbox building game that has automation as its main mechanic. Dyson Sphere Program is a third-person overhead automation game with the focus of building a Dyson Sphere system. You control a mecha called Icarus. You are tasked to collect materials on multiple planets to start your Dyson Sphere Program. Dyson Sphere Program is the most feature-rich automation game in this list. There is a lot of content in this game. 
the complexity of the tech is probably the highest of all the games on this list. So the potential is the highest of them all. As the name of the game suggests, you are here to collect materials and build structures to quote unquote liberate the power of a star. While Satisfactory encourages you to explore the planet, Dyson Sphere program wants you to explore the galaxy and collect as much materials you can encounter which will be contributed to the Dyson Sphere. This is the most grandiose game in this list, even though the 3GB game size does not reflect it, because Dyson Sphere program generates the universe as you go, within a seed that you put it. Yes, this is a game with a procedurally generated universe. The progression curve of this game is also a perfectly steady curve just like Satisfactory, but with a much higher potential with more futuristic tech. Because you don't stop in nuclear power like Satisfactory, I mean that's pretty obvious because your endgame is by making structure around a star to make a Dyson Sphere. This instantly made the game more complex and I don't think just any people can easily play this game because of how overwhelming the game is. I am currently still in the process of playing this and I haven't even reached the end game yet. So I don't know what it looks like in the end game, which is intriguing to me. Dyson Sphere program is the most sandbox game of the three, with the largest potential space in the game and the option of a sandbox mode. Even though it might be overwhelming to new players, you can already play in sandbox mode and you can just build everything to your heart's content. A lot of options for building as well, with the option of elevation as well, even though it looks like you can't do it because of the overhead camera view. I had such a blast playing Dyson Sphere program because of the freedom of how you wanted to play the game, how you wanted to build, and the amount of planets that you can build on, and ultimately, the satisfaction of finally kickstarting your Dyson Sphere program for the first time is just so satisfying. Dyson Sphere program is as enjoyable as satisfactory to me, but the only reason why I like satisfactory more is probably the first person perspective being more immersive or so, or that satisfactory has more sentimental value since it's the first automation game that I've played. But as a game itself, I would still highly recommend Dyson Sphere Program. Factorio is the most different of the three, not only because it has a top-down isometric perspective and that the graphics are better suited for a low-spec system, it has a different setting as well. Previously, in Satisfactory and Dyson Sphere Program, you are deployed to a planet to create your factory on purpose. Factorio, however, has a survival theme going on. Factorio introduces you from the start by crashing your ship and landing you on an alien planet. In Factorio, not only that you are creating your factory in a rustic style, but you are also surviving from aliens that will constantly attack your factory as well. As a concept, I think this is great, but I know I will get some flags when I say this next part. I think Factorio is the weakest of the three automation slash factory games. Let me explain. First, the alien invasion survival thing, while great in concept, I don't think it's best suited for a factory slash automation game. It is actually nice to have some sort of threat in your game, and you have some sort of a mini tower defense game mode with building your turrets to defend from aliens, but the overall enjoyment of a factory game is not satisfactory, because it will actively destroy your creation, which means that you have to compromise your creativity for the function of your defenses. It will in the end just create unnecessary stress in the factory building part of the game, and it's already stressful enough to create the optimal factory build. Hey, editing is anaki here. Before I get called out for criticizing this, yes, I know that Satisfactory has a combat system, and Dyson Sphere program will have a combat system as well. But for the time being, for Satisfactory and Dyson Sphere program, they don't actively attack and destroy your factories and buildings, at least for now. We'll just have to wait and see how Dyson Sphere program handles their combat system and invasion system. 
But for now, my point on Factorio's alien invasion system makes Factorio a weaker game of the three for me. Okay, back to the video. Oh, and speaking of creativity in building, that leads to my second reason why it's weaker than the other automation game. Factorio uses a fixed top-down isometric camera perspective. Being a game with low-end graphics may work well on the computing side of the game. Since automation game will need a lot of computing power, the perspective of the game, however, greatly hinders your creativity of your factory building. What I'm saying is that the game does not introduce verticality into building your factory. All they have for the answer of verticality is that conveyor belts and pipes can be built underground. You know, Dyson Sphere program probably has the same building structure as Factorio. Heck, I think Dyson Sphere program replicates Factorio's building system since they are that similar. But Dyson Sphere program had the advantage of 3D graphics, free rotating camera, and most importantly, verticality, both in certain buildings and conveyor belts. I can't stress it enough how important verticality is in a game that focuses on building your own factory of your desires. Satisfactory, having a first-person perspective, no doubt had the freedom of verticality, which makes for amazing builds that you can do. Dyson Sphere program is great as well, since there's a lot of leeway in building your factory by having that verticality option. But in Factorio, I can't decide on the design that is good for my factory because of the limitation. But when I finally decided, the aliens already invaded my factory and all is lost. It is generally not a good time when you are pressed to do something while having a lot of limitations to consider. That being said though, I have to admit that I've only played Factorio for 20 hours. Whether or not you want to believe what I said, that is fine. But with all that said though, I would still think that Factorio is still a good factory slash automation game to boot. Not only because of the low spec requirement, since all the other options require a relatively high spec computer, but this game is generally good to get the overall feeling of the factory and automation game. Not gonna lie, I won't be diving deep into Dyson Sphere program if I haven't played Factorio yet, since they are that similar in terms of the building mechanics. And since Factorio is arguably simple to understand the tech and anything like that, just like Satisfactory, Factorio is a good start if you want to delve deep into the factory and automation genre of games. I've always thought that 2022 will be one of the worst years of my life. Not only because of the pandemic that keeps coming back, but also because of my anxiety of the unforeseeable future. Especially when I learned from my college years that my passion for engineering died in college. However, I am so glad that I found the automation games Trinity in 2022, because the automation game Trinity captured my heart. Not because of the fact that they took a lot of my game time, because of how time consuming these games are, it's also not because of the fun factor of these games, but these games give me what I never expect to happen. While I was playing Satisfactory, Dyson Sphere Program, or even Factorio, I feel nerdy as I try to optimize every bit of my builds, trying to avoid bottleneck by calculating everything firsthand with a calculator. It is as if my long dead passion for engineering flickers once more. I probably won't be an engineer at this point in time, but that realization assures me that my time in college, trying very hard to become an engineer, did not go to waste. It sparks a little bit of hope to me that my life in college is not a total waste. In fact, no events in our life have no meaning. Every bit of positive and negatives are what shapes us as a human. I won't be myself right now if I don't hate my time in college. I won't be here if I don't accept that D score on my thesis. And I won't be enjoying this automation game if I haven't had that early passion for engineering before college. I guess what I'm trying to say with this video is that Whenever you feel like you've wasted your time doing something that you thought you are passionate about, it is not a waste of time. 
In fact, it is an experience that will eventually shape your future. Shape the real you. And so, that is why I am glad that I found the automation game Trinity.